we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father of blessings, please give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and prudence. And as your children, wherever we go, may we be victorious. May we be a blessed man that shares profit to many people. According to the word, we believe our descendants will do more well, that we will We're assured we will be patriots for our country and our people and that according to your will, we will be instruments of righteousness. By victory, may we give you glory. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me, sheep. So the blessings are in front of you. That's what God says but we can't see them. And that's why many people feel conflict. But actually, the blessings are in front of me. So to make these blessings mine, James chapter 4, verse 10, this is what we have to do. Then you'd be able to see them. But oppositely, you get upset. Um, You say your pride hurts. So instead of taking the blessings, you take the disasters. So when you go out, There are so many blessings out there, but instead of taking the blessings, you keep taking the disasters. And then after a few years, you say you're ruined or your children aren't doing well or you started to do well, but something else happened. You keep saying these other things. So then I look at you and 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 I see that you took those things. It's like someone who's crazy who keeps rifling through the trash can and taking that. And when you get home... Everywhere, it's just a trash can. That's how you live. And then you, you're mistaken in yourself, thinking that you didn't do that and that you've lived so um, diligently. So let's read James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. Amen. So then after this word, it says, Who are you that you judge others? So let's read verse 11 and 12. Do not speak against one another, brethren. He who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you who judge your neighbor? Amen. So this is what the fake denominations look like, the fake churchgoers without Christ. So they disobey all of God's word, so they're ruined. So then in verse 10 it says, to humble yourself. But in the world, because there's no one who lowers themselves, what is it to lower yourself? It is to receive blessings. So when I go out on the street, there's so many things to receive blessings, but no one does those things. They all go the way of ruin. You want to do well. The way to do well is to be humbled. But no one does this. So even though you hear this word, when you go out, you say, oh, um, I'm, you know, it's unfortunate. Uh, You know, my pride's hurt. I feel upset. So you go the way to be ruined of curses. And then you're mistaken to thinking that you're living a life of faith and you're getting blessings. And so when this is stored up, then that's when a problem explodes. You know, if that dust gets built up, then later you can't live there. So you keep going that way, and yet you don't know. So God, through us, through our lives, He wants us to show others. He wants us to show us doing well. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, then why does God tell us to be lowered? Well, it's when we're lowered, that's where the blessings are, because Jesus is in the low place. So whoever you meet today, you'll meet someone at work, you'll meet someone along the street. So when you meet them, you always want to go above them, the way of ruin. You don't want to go lower and go the way of blessings. So why is it people attend church? But they're all ruined by disasters and curses and they're not, they're not saved because they don't humble themselves and that's why they fight and they separate and make denominations. If you're humble, you don't make denominations. You know, if, if you're high up here but everyone is lowered and we all roll down here, then you become one. 
So Christ, you become one. Why is it you fight with your spouse? Because you're saying, who are you? And so you argue. But if you say, I'm your slave, there's nothing to argue about. So this gospel, to make it mine, it says, don't be afraid, don't fear. All of these incredible promises, it starts with being a slave. So without four-step repentance, you can't become a slave. That's Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. So because you're not a slave, you don't have a, 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 a bottom. And so there's nothing in the middle and there's nothing above. And so you go the way of ruin and then you say you believe in Jesus. Well, who does this? Well, it starts with the pastors. Once, if, if they're raised up, they'll go there. But if they're not recognized, they won't go there. They won't go to the lowest seat and be praying. They always want to be recognized. That's the Pharisee and Sadducee, the one who deserves wrath. So it's not for us to curse them. I too am like that. So my place, the lowest place where I'm treated as a beggar, no one wants to go there. That's where you can live, but no one goes there. So you want to receive blessings today, but you want you don't want to go to that place. Wherever you go, you continue to meet people to receive blessings. But then always you say, oh, I'm better than you. And that's why you go the way of ruin. You know, if, you, if you're upset, then it's because you're saying, I'm better than you. And so then you keep going the way of ruin. And yet you don't know this. And so then your children go the way of ruin. Because I do the things of ruin, this all gets passed down to my children. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. This is for three and four generations. And then you're mistaken thinking that you've done, done something well. But God says, go where no one else goes, where it's quiet and it's... it's uh, um, and so, you know, out of uh, out of 10 people, if I'm the lowest, that's when you succeed. But you look at people with problems. They have so much pride. And then with that, they're always so smart with their thoughts. So then whoever you meet today, when you meet them, no matter how worthless they are, it's when you say that, that I'm worse than you. I have more sin than you. When you see that person's faults and you repent of it as my sin, that's when you become humble. So if you're humble, that's a place where without where you're without sin. So let's find Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 to 8. So Jesus was lowered and lowered, even though he was the same as God, and he got to the place where he obeyed to the point of death. If you go there, that's when you succeed and you receive but, you know, the smallest thing and you do, uh, you know, if you're tired, then you do other things and you'll scheme. So God says to give up your heart, all of your heart, to revive your conscience and to give up your life. But you don't give up your life. You don't even give up your heart properly, but you don't give up your life at all. And then you say, why aren't there any answers? If there are three wires coming into the house, um, for electricity, but some people only have one wire or two wires connected, and then you say, why? Why isn't it coming? You know, even though you revive your good and pure conscience, without your kind conscience, that faith collapses. That's 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19. But because you've never heard a sermon like this, you've never revived your conscience, and so then you attend church. You know, as time goes by, you're ruined. Which church, which pastor, which elder, which deacon? Without four-step repentance, it's a matter of time, they're all ruined. They've already been ruined, and in the future, they'll be more ruined, and yet they don't know. Isn't this so sad? Who makes it like this? The pastors in front who are fake. It's these fake pastors, whether it's Korea or in the world, this mystery of Christ. It's what God has given us. It is the promise of blessings. The pastors and denominations that slander this, they're all ruined. That's what God has recorded. So it's unavoidable. So the only way to live is by forced out repentance. There was a female evangelist. She never got married. And and she was an evangelist till her late age. But before she died, she was in the hospital, lying there, not able to die. And so she called us. I went there with the saints. God said to her, if you don't ask for forgiveness for slandering Pastor Park, then, you know, you'll go to hell. So how afraid was she that she called me to ask for forgiveness? And I went 
that, to that hospital. That's what God does. So if you slander and you just sit there, you, it's not just that you'll be completely ruined. Your children are all ruined. But these idiots, they don't know this and they just ignore the Bible. They ignore Almighty God's word. You say that you're not ignoring, but you're ignoring this word about humbling yourself. You don't listen. And that's why you don't receive blessings and you keep receiving curses. And yet you still can't realize. Now let's realize. If you realize you have to act completely, you have to do four step repentance to make up mine. So he wants to give you blessings the whole day, but you keep taking the curses. Today, let's get rid of this simple life. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. But emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So this is the resurrection that four-step repentance brings about. So it's the death on the cross. So what we have to know is Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. That's all we have to boast of. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, to only know the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and to only boast of this. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, if you boast of anything else, you'll be ruined. So in our country, you see these big fake churches being ruined. Soon, there'll be another. You'll hear about another fake church being ruined. So if you don't quickly realize, then, then God, he will make you receive so much shame. But there are idiots who follow after that. These idiots who want to receive those disasters and curses. Why follow after that? Why? Why are you so happy to follow after that ruin? And then you ruin your household. God said he will do it. You think that churches aren't ruined? Do you know how many fake churches there are? You go to Europe. These churches, they're all ruined. You see if any of them have done well. In Europe, these, these great churches they built, no one goes there anymore. They're sold as pubs because they can't maintain them. And so they're sold as pubs or restaurants. They're sold for so cheap. What is that? Well, Korea is the same. And all they do is bring curses upon God. And the Soviet, all those churches, they're all pubs and motels. So what are you going to do? How am I going to live today? You're going to still have those demons where you can't say Amen? Because you don't humble yourself, that's why you can't say Amen to God's Word. How proud and conceited you are. You look at the person who can't say Amen. They and their children receive so many dirty disasters and curses. They, they don't say Amen to God's Word, and yet they still don't know. They don't know that they're the one that ruined. They don't just ruin themselves. Everywhere they go, they ruin. So pray a lot for them and just watch and see how. If you view how they're ruined, you'll see exactly. So then what happens? Jesus was the same as God, yet he humbled himself. He humbled himself to the point of giving up his life. Here it says he humbled himself. So why was he humble? Because he didn't have sin. So to not have sin, whoever you meet, whether you meet two people or ten people, to say, I'm the worst. If you repent the most, that's the way to receive blessings. That's the way to be humble. So then you would take the blessings. But you say, well, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. That's curses. And so you live like that and then you're ruined. I'm sure there are people here who suffer a lot because of a few dollars. Why is it of those small, that small little amount? Why are you suffering, you know, an amount where it would just be the amount for someone's meal? That's how much you haven't humbled yourself. In the lowest place, that's where all the blessings have been prepared. We receive blessings through Jesus. So through Christ, we get to Jesus. When we get to Jesus and we're humbled, then Jesus, he connects us to God and he gives us all blessings. But we won't go to that place. And so even though the blessings are in front of you, you won't take them and you keep taking the disasters and curses. And yet, if you're close to someone like that, then you'll be ruined. Let's live properly. So the blessings are in front of me. But it's because you're not humbled that you can't take them. Please don't become someone like that. So if you have problems that aren't being solved, if you have problems, 
It's because you have this stubbornness and you won't repent and you're so high by yourself and you act like you're better. This is what ruins me and my children, yet you do that. So if you come to the Lord according to your mood, until that is uprooted, you and your children will, be, will suffer. That has to be uprooted. That's when God will give you blessings. So there are blessings in front of me. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15. The blessings are in front of me. At the same time, the disasters and curses, my children being ruined, that's in front of me too. So today, they're inside of the people we meet, the work that we do, because inside of them, the blessings and curses are there together. If I'm high, I take the disasters and curses. If I'm low, then I'll take the blessings. So we have to become lowered. How do we become lowered? It's only by repentance. If we do forced our repentance, no matter how high I want to become, I become low. So how much am I a hypocrite, a fake, when you're told to do forced our repentance, instead of repenting, if you repent, do you become bold as a lion or fearful as a mouse? You become bold as a lion. So if you're bold as a lion, then you're confident. You know, anyone who sees you, they can see that you're right. But when you're told to repent, you end up disheartened. You know, being deflated is different to repenting. If you're deflated, then you're dirty. You're, you become so filthy. But if you, if, if you repent, if you're, if you're bold, then you become sharp and you become so someone. You become so bold and, you know, some people say, oh, because I believe in Jesus, I can't say anything to anyone. Who says that? If you're bold as a lion, why can't you say anything? If anything, saying something, that's being righteous. So if I'm doing well in the right way and then you see someone doing wrong, to say this is what you should do, you'll have assurance. But if you're a demon, you'll be like, oh, I don't know, you know, if you can do well like this. That's... That's Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. So if you're humble, then you're, then you're bold and you have assurance and you do well and you make others do well. That's what it is to be humble. But then if you're just crestfallen and deflated, that's not being humble. If you're humble, then you're bold. If you're humble, you're, you're bold. But... If you can't even discern this, then it's because you haven't repented. If you repent, then you become bold. You have assurance. And you, you, when you help others, when you see someone doing the wrong thing, you say, look, this is what you have to do. This is the way to live. And if you teach them, and, and because it works, of course they're going to be thankful. So God says the blessings are in front of you. You can take them if you're lowered. But we keep taking the curses. From today, let's, let's be lowered. Then you can take all good things. Even now, the Lord, He wants us to do well. So it's not hard to do well. He says to be lowered. Whoever you meet, to say your wrongs are mine and to repent and to be lowered. So what does that person teach you? They're teaching you what to repent of so that you can receive blessings. So how can there be any enemies? They're all my teacher. They're all teachers that make me receive blessings. But you don't have thanksgiving. Oh, I've met someone filthy. And then you just spit on them. So then you spit on the blessings and then you take the curses. So Romans chapter 2, verse 6. So then according to your actions, that's what you're repaid. And so you can't take the blessings. So God, when he sees you, you're taking the curses, which, you know, it makes God feel so regretful. So you say, oh, life is so hard. It is so easy to succeed and to receive blessings and to do well. Why do you keep saying it's hard? It's because you haven't repented and you have demons inside of you. Even with your spouse, you won't accept their things. So when are you going to accept other people's things? You look at people who don't do well, they won't even take the things of their spouse. Why? Because of what's stored up from their ancestors. You can't win over this with your strength. You know, you end up just divorcing your spouse. You know, you won't accept their things. That's how evil you are. So with repentance, we have to be humbled. So if I become like that, then my children divorce. If I'm at the point where I don't want to live with that person, then my children, they end up splitting, um, di divorcing. So when God says to, to 
to be lowered. It's not to be deflated. It's to repent so that we can see everything properly and to go the way of success for me to do well, to make others do well. So wherever you go, you have popularity. You're praised by man. Let's all receive this from today, from now. Let's all receive this. This is all we have to do. And that's when we and our children do well. Everywhere we go. So Pastor Park, where, you know, when I go to that place, I say, I'm, I'm lower. And so I'll move something over for them or, or I'll clear something away for them. Why? Because I'm, I'm worse. And that's when the blessings come. That's when I can give benefit to the people around me. What am I like? Even with your spouse, your one body. If you can't stand them, then already you can't do well. If I can't stand them, then my children, they end up um, divorced. You see these fake Christians, their children being divorced. Why? Because the parents, they hate each other. So then the, the ones, then the children, they have to, they have to separate. So starting from me to become a slave. So if I'm a slave, then he raises me up to become a friend. If you're a friend with God, what won't work out? He's like, hey, friend. And so then when I come here to pray, I quickly go, I lower myself down to the low place. And then God, he raises me up and he's like, hey, friend. And that's how workings happen. But what about you? You won't become a slave and you try to look up to God and so then you end up falling down. So now, let's look at the low place. If you look around you, so the things that give you blessings are what upset you. If I repent that I become lowered, it's when I'm lowered that God raises me up. So all those unfortunate things become blessings. So without four-step repentance, you can't be lowered. The, it seems simple in theory, but the reason why it doesn't work is because you don't do four-step repentance. Churches, they don't talk about being lowered because they don't know the way. You know, a, ch a church that says, oh, our pastor is so high, that's a fake church. They'll receive disasters and curses. At the beginning, the prodigal son seems to do well. He has money, he has friends, but after a few years, you become a beggar. So why go to a church like that? Why attend there? So the pastor of that church has to be the lowest that meets Jesus. That's a true church. So how do we become lowered? It's only by four-step repentance. So to meet someone without sin, we have to be without sin. So when he tells us to be lowered, it's to see whoever's sin as my sin and to repent and be humble. That's Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. So everyone's come to give you blessings. How can you be upset? There's no enemy. It's for me to repent. And So if you can't love your enemy, so he has come, if that person has come, for you to repent and to receive blessings. If you don't know this, then you don't have faith. Let's find Matthew 5, verse 44. So if you don't have faith, how can you receive salvation? So these fake denominations, they make even normal people into enemies, and that's why they're ruined. People who attend those churches, you see how they're ruined if they can die properly. They're all ruined. So if you have someone you hate, an enemy, It's disasters and curses. It's when you repent and say that person's sins are mine, that's when it all changes to blessings. So why is it you can't love your enemy and you end up going the way of curses? For us, we don't have enemies. If someone's giving you loss, no. There's no one who can give you loss. Because if you repent and you become worse than that person, then God helps me, not others. So there is no loss. So I don't have any worries. I don't have any loss. I've got nothing. So I'm always living with peace. You know, someone said to me at a restaurant, uh, the, uh, the employees said, Oh, pastor, how is it that you're, you're always so, you know, happy? And I said, because God does that. And so I said to myself, Oh, I'm worse than those employees. You know, how good is this word where he tells us to receive blessings that the blessings are in front of us? But why do we see that as enemies? So when you don't have enemies and you have thanksgiving, that is faith. 
You say you believe, but it's when you love your enemies. That is faith. So verse 44 and 45. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Amen. So today, are there enemies in front of me or not? If you have enemies, then you don't have faith. You'll go to hell. You'll receive disasters and curses. Three and four generations will be ruined. So if we repent so that we can love our enemies, then it's blessings for a thousand generations. You give benefit to others. So everywhere you go today, these two things will be in front of me. But we always say, oh, it's so unfortunate. Then you'll receive dis curses. It's There's nothing but good things. And that's why there's nothing but thanksgiving. So we have to do four-step repentance to have thanksgiving. That's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. So today, let's only receive the miraculous blessings. If we do four-step repentance, there are only miraculous blessings. From today, let's receive. Let's all receive. Let's close our eyes quietly. So who is it that I cannot stand in my heart? Usually it's your spouse. It's not just your spouse. Then there's your in-laws. It's within your household. That's how much you can't stand them with your in-laws. It's, it's the relationships that are most close to you that you hate the most. In other words, you, love, you hate yourself. So if we could do this by human strength, we wouldn't need the blood of Christ. But because it doesn't happen by our strength, even though we know we shouldn't do it, we can't fix it. So with the blood of Christ, now let's fix all this. So if you come up again, if you are knocked up against something, if you have an enemy, it's because they've come to bring you blessings. If I repent of their sins, then I'll receive blessings. If I don't repent, then I'll take curses. I'll take disasters. So let's realize this. So whoever you meet, oh, thank you. Whoever you meet, it's Thanksgiving. Why? Because they've come to bring you blessings. But if you can't stand them and you say, oh, I can't even stand them and you turn around, then instead you'll leave the blessings and you'll only take the curses. So from today, let's fix this. So you can only fix this if you repent. So let's close our eyes quietly. So yesterday, the day before, uh, a month ago, 10 years ago, who, who is it that when I met them, I couldn't stand them? Let's receive forgiveness. Until we're forgiven, then we and our children, we can't do well. So later, when that bomb explodes, then, you know, you're going to get a, some accident. You're going to get some problem. You know, if you, if you have this accident or problem, it's because you're sitting there not repenting and hating someone. So when that gets stored up, it will explode. So which bomb will explode today? What disaster do you want exploding to your children? Or do you want to receive blessings? Because we have to receive one or the other. So whoever it is to love them, they may seem like an enemy, but they've brought enemies. The ones that you can't stand the most, that you hate the most, they're the ones that bring the true blessings. So then if we repent of that person's sin as mine and we're lowered, then that's when the blessings come. My children do well. Let's all receive. Let's all receive this blessing. Father, we so didn't know the low place. Other than forced at repentance, the blood of Christ, we can't go there. When we see someone we can't stand, we treat them as an enemy. So if you hate yourself, then you hate your spouse. How simple were we? Why is it that we can't become one with our spouse and we hate them so much? You know, how is it even though we're one body, how can the right arm hate the left arm? How can the right eye try to poke the left eye? This simple life, may we now end it. Now, whoever we meet, they've come to bring me blessings. When we repent of that person's wrongs as mine and to become more humble and to hear that it's for me to receive blessings by our lives. May we show others our lives to give you glory. From today, may we surely be victors. In Jesus' name, 
We thank you and bless. Amen.